Have you ever wanted to learn Python or dive into a new programming language? With ChatGPT, the possibilities are endless. Within seconds, you can generate a course outline, deep dive into topics, create demo code, make and solve challenges, and you can even generate quizzes. Who needs school when you have AI to learn and practice with? We're talking about practice. No, not that AI. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can use ChatGPT as a learning device. Before we get started, we're going to take a quick word from our sponsor. And as always, if you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you watch our channel, that probably means that you care about security. If you're a developer using open source libraries or even writing code from scratch, it's important to make sure that your code is secure. And that's where Sneak comes in. Sneak integrates into your existing tools, your IDEs, CLI, repos, and scans your code as you write it in real time. I'm not kidding. Watch this. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code with the Sneak Security extension enabled. And I'm writing this code in Python. I am writing code to log into a SQL database. And oh no, I can see that I'm getting some errors in here. So if I hover over this error, it says I have a SQL injection because unsanitized input exists. And if I come over here and actually click on this, I can show the suggestion from Sneak, which says that, yeah, it's unsanitized. But also, here's some examples of how to fix this. You can click through. There's three here. It tells us exactly what we need to do, giving us real-time examples. And we can even learn more about the vulnerability if we want to. It's really great. Let's see what happens when I fix this code. And once we do fix this, all I have to do is hit Save. And it will rescan my file. And just so you can see the fix, I came in here and added some parameterized queries. And now we are all good to go. We have saved it. And look, I've got no errors down here, no errors in my file. Now I'm not going to have SQL injection in my code. And that is the power of Sneak. So make sure your project remains secure from the start. You could try Sneak today with my code at sneak.co forward slash the cyber mentor. So what you see here are my prompts. I already entered these prompts in, but this took 10 to 15 minutes. Everything you're going to see right now took about 10 to 15 minutes. All I did was come in here and I said, I want to learn Python. We could put any topic in here that we want. ChatGPT is an awesome resource for this. I just said, what topic should I learn and in what order should I really learn them? And here it goes. It just says, hey, here's how you learn Python. Let's start with the basics. You need to know what Python is. Hey, we just went from Python 2 to Python 3 a few years ago. You should probably know the differences there. How do you install Python? What's an IDE? Et cetera, et cetera. Okay, now you're going to write your first program. You're going to learn about variables and data types. This is really awesome. But what's even cooler is it gets into like intermediate topics and then it gets into advanced topics. So this is saying, hey, if you want to truly learn Python, kind of go in this order and just go down this list. Maybe, not too bad. Even tells you, hey, here's some specialized areas. Like you could learn web development and it has a little bit of web stuff in here, like the beautiful soup, the Selenium, doing RESTful APIs. I think it's very interesting, which is nice. They've got data analysis, machine learning, all kinds of stuff. So maybe you just come in here and say, I want to learn web development. How do I do that with Python? And you can generate your own course curriculum. Now, if you scroll down here, all I did was prompt exactly what it told me. So if we go through these little bullet points here, this is what is Python? Okay, and then just go straight down the list. So starting out with what is Python, it'll tell you what is Python? What are the key characteristics? Why is Python important? Where is it commonly used? So it tells you about this. It gives you some background and introduction before you just dive right into Python. Again, it explains the differences between Python 2 and Python 3. You can come in here and actually look at this. It even tells you like, hey, print statements changed. Here's a print statement in Python 2. Here's what it looks like in Python 3. Uh, integer division, input functions, all kinds of stuff, error handling. It just talks about all the changes and the improvements, et cetera, et cetera, which is really, really nice here. OK, how do we install Python? Well, great news is it says, hey, I'll tell you how to install it, and I'll do it for all the operating systems. So Windows, Mac OS, Linux. Hey, go to this official website. We'll even give you the link. The link is correct. Run the installer. Make sure you add it to your path. Fantastic. Here, how you do it on Mac right here, Linux right there. Very, very straightforward. And then it tells you about all the different IDEs and what features they have and who is suitable for, like PyCharm and Jupyter and Visual Studio Code, which is my favorite. And so you have all these different ones. It even gives you text editors like Sublime and Atom. No Notepad++, though. That's a little sad. But then it says, hey, here's how you set up your development environment. It walks you through everything. It's fantastic. OK, so we want to write our first program. 
this was a prompt that it gave me. It says hello world, but it's going to come in here and it's going to actually write that hello world. It remembers pretty nice. So it tells you how to do this. Okay. You're going to open your IDE, your text editor. You're going to come through here and it's going to tell you how to write the code, save the file, run the program. And congratulations. You just ran your first program in Python. That's also pretty cool. So I just went down this list and I said, okay, what about the next section where it's integers, floats, strings, booleans? It did okay here. The one thing it didn't talk about was variables. I probably should have prompted that. But if we scrolled back up, you would see that the section was called variables, but the actual bullet point in there didn't contain variables, which is interesting. But coming through here, it talks about, hey, what's an integer? Here's some examples of an integer. What's a float? Here's some examples of that. What's a string? Examples of that. Booleans, true or false, right? Okay, coming through here, it's awesome stuff. Even gives you basic operations for mathematics and strings, booleans, conversions. This is all fantastic stuff. I'm gonna keep saying it because it really is. Now, here's where we can really challenge ourselves. What about all this? Okay, it's great to see this, but how do we see this in action? Well, why don't we just ask ChatGPT to write us a program? Can you build us a beginner program using integers, floats, strings, booleans? Absolutely. So it's going to come in here and it's going to create a program for us that calculates the area of a circle and checks that the area is greater than a specific value. So it's jumping a little bit ahead of itself again, but this is okay. If you come in here and you're studying this and you start to see things that maybe you haven't seen before, you can always prompt and say, what is this? Like here, for example, it came in here and said, if is greater and then print something and then else. And we don't know what this is. So we might copy this and we'll, we'll go back in a second and we'll talk about it. But it's going to come in here and say, hey, exactly how to run this program, what it's going to do. This program's taking input. It's coming in and basically using everything that we just asked about in here, which is pretty nice. Now, if for some reason we didn't know what this statement was, we could say, can you please explain what the following is in our code? And then you can just come down here and I like to put in quotes and then you can just hit enter and that will generate down there. We'll come back in just a second to look at that. So another thing that you can do though, is you can come in here and say, well, can you give me a challenge? Like, can you give me a beginner level programming challenges that requires this requires using integers, floats, strings, and booleans. And it did a great job here. It said, Hey, create a program that converts temperatures between Fahrenheit and Celsius. And then it tells you what the program should do. Okay, so it wants you to ask the user for their name and greet them. It wants you to ask the user what they want to do. So here's a conditional logic again, which we haven't learned yet. It's a little bit ahead of itself, but that's okay. And you can come through and look at the different requirements and it's going to give you some sample output. So, hey, it's going to prompt, what's your name? You say, Alice, it's going to say, hello, Alice, what would you like to do? And it gives you everything in here, even gives you a couple of hints, which is nice. It tells you how to calculate uh, the conversions, which is pretty cool. And if you get stuck, the nice thing is, can you provide us the solution? Absolutely, we can. So you can come through here and it's going to give you the code and what it looks like. This is amazing stuff. I wish I had this when I was learning programming. This makes life so much easier because you have instant explanations for everything on your hands. It even tells you how to run the solution. It's great. What if you wanted a quiz? You can come in here and say, can you write me a five question quiz about this topic? Absolutely, it can. It will and it will generate the answers. You could always prompt this to say, can you write me the quiz without telling me the answers and then say, okay, tell me the answers. So you don't have to have it show the answers right away, but you can get quizzed in here and it will write quizzes out for you, which is really nice. And then let's look at that prompt we just did. So can you explain this code? And here's the code that it gave us, right? And it's going to tell us what an if statement is and go into that. That's really nice. It's going to tell us what even a print statement is, what else means and give us all this information. So we can come through here and actually read about this in very, very fine detail. So the days of needing to Google a very, very specific thing, I don't wanna say they're over, cause they're not, but they're really limited. We can come in and just ask ChatGPT about a lot of this stuff and we can just come in here within 15 minutes, I was able to generate all of this without any issues whatsoever. And that is amazing. This is how AI is gonna change how we learn. And that is awesome. Now, there are a couple caveats here. AI sometimes is confidently wrong. You need to make sure that you're fact checking everything that it is telling you. Just be careful on easier stuff like this. It's not too bad, but I have prompted it at times where it just spits out bad code or it spits out bad information. And I know that because I'm an expert in some of the things that I was having to generate like a blog just to write for me. And sometimes 
it's not accurate. So you need to verify when you're coming through here. A lot of this beginner stuff like this, very, very useful. You can also tell ChatGPT it's wrong and it'll try to fix it itself as well. AI is not perfect yet. Maybe it'll never will be, but this is a fantastic resource to just start challenging yourself and studying and just learning about anything you want. Python is merely an example here. You can learn about anything you want using AI. Hopefully you found this useful. Very quick video, very straightforward. If you liked the video, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, my name is Heath Adams, AKA The Cyber Mentor, and I do thank you for joining me. Peace out.